put this uh, together at the last minute because we just had a, a launch last week. So uh, hopefully I'm better prepared than I think I am. Um, so my name is Dave Gilberts, and this is Publishing and Developing uh, Indie Adventure Games. Uh, so who am I? Uh, I am a native New Yorker. I grew up on Long Island, been living in Manhattan for the last 12, 13 years. Uh, former 9 to fiver had uh, worked in the garment center, doing very boring stuff in shipping, not very interesting. Made freeware games in my spare time, and uh, in 2006, I sort of threw caution to the wind and started uh, selling them full time under the name of Wajedi. Uh, so I started that by myself in 2006, joined by my wife Janet in 2009, uh, who is from the UK, although I'm not. Um, and we make point-and-click adventure games, that's uh, kind of our, our thing. Uh, so the focus of this talk, uh, since it's about, basically about an indie publishing other indie games, I, there are not a lot of people who do that. I know a few, and I spoke to them to try to get their perspective, but it's, their experience really matches mine. So I basically, the focus is me. I'm basically talking about my experience um, starting the company and why I got into publishing. Uh, so I'm going to start with kind of how I got started, uh, show the decisions I made, and why I started publishing in the first place. So my word is in gospel. You can base your judgment off my own experience. Uh, you can either not do what I did or do what I did. It's, it's really up to you. All games and companies have different goals when they start out. Uh, mine, when I started in 2006, was uh, that this is how I'm going to earn my living. I want to do this full time. I uh, had just come back from teaching English in Asia. I had enough money to last me six months, maybe 10 if I lived like Gandhi. Uh, and so all my decisions on how I made my games, how I sold the games, everything was based on that. And that philosophy continues today, is this is how I earn my living. So I've always got to keep that in mind. Um, so the early challenges I faced back in 2006 was I had zero experience um, making professional games. I tried getting jobs, no one would hire me. Um, my little, uh, my, my freeware games weren't very impressive to uh, game companies in the area. Um, also, I had very, very little money. Like I said, I had savings and that was about it. Uh, so I had no money to work with. And also, I wasn't taken too seriously. When I told people what I wanted to do, they were like, all right, yeah, that's cute. You know, good luck with that. Uh, so hiring people uh, to work with me was difficult. No one, no one took it seriously. It was always something people did for fun. Uh, but I was deadly serious. I was kind of gambling my savings on this. So um, I had to, uh, that was a problem. Again, this was my livelihood. So these were the, those three things were the reality, and I had to deal with that. So since I had no experience, basically, I had to gain it. Uh, There's no way about it. I was going to make mistakes, and um, I had I learned, I need to learn from my mistakes to make room for more. Uh, so that was that, um, by not doing the same thing twice, pretty much. So I didn't have the experience, I had to gain it. Uh, I didn't have much money, so I had to work within my means. I couldn't make a big epic game with the nicest graphics. I had to keep it very small and keep it very tight. And I also had to keep the time frame very small as a result. So I had to work with what I had. Um, and I wasn't taken too seriously. All I could do was take myself seriously. I had to really uh, hammer home the fact that this is, I was serious about this. So that took some doing. By this point, uh, six, seven years and 11 games later, I think people get that I'm pretty serious about this. So yeah, that took a while to get. Uh, I had to keep the expectations realistic. Like I said, couldn't make a big epic game. I had to keep the time frame short my goals reachable, and I had to sell it for a reasonable price. I couldn't sell it for two or three dollars. I had to sell it for what the going rate was at the time, which at the time was fourteen ninety nine, and that seemed to hit the sweet spot. Sweet spot. I can't talk. Uh, back in two thousand six, so I had to stick to my guns about the price. I knew people were going to complain, and people did, but I kept it at that price because I, again, this was how I was earning my living. Uh, and I also needed to continue to produce. So short time frames, reachable goals, continuous output of games. And that last one's very important. That was the key to the business. Um, keep making games. And I have to admit, that wasn't much of a business plan. Uh, just keep getting games out wasn't always going to be uh, possible. I originally thought 
how from if you've done my first game uh, and my second, my first game was the Shiva. I managed to get that out in two months, and I got Blackwell Legacy out in four months. I thought I could maintain that momentum. That proved to be impossible. Um, I got Blackwell Legacy out in four months, and the game after that, Blackwell Unbound, didn't arrive until eight months later. I had really underestimated the amount of work involved, work involved in building a business, doing all the follow-up work, dealing with the press. That's a, a panel we're going to uh, have later. Um, it took a lot of work to really maintain the sales, to keep living, and to make the next game. Uh, so, obviously, I couldn't keep this up. Uh, because while well, each game earned enough money to live on, if one of them didn't sell, I was screwed. I was literally, as it says, one flop away from disaster. Uh, so I didn't like those odds. And again, this was my livelihood. So I couldn't take that risk. I had to do something to change that. And the answer um, was publishing. Uh, that's what I came up with. And the logic seemed sound. Pay someone to develop a game, while I work on my own. That way I would uh, double my output, I'd have more games coming out. Uh, more people would be coming to the site, the risk would be spread out. If one of them didn't do well, I had another one that could probably take up the slack. Uh, so that was the logic at the time. Also, I wanted to keep uh, Wadge Die in the public eye because with one game coming out every year, the traffic to my website slowed to a crawl, people would forget about me. So I wanted to have games coming out regularly. So that, those are the main reasons why I decided to get into publishing. Uh, and also, I was being published at the time, so I thought I would basically mimic my publisher and, and I, would, I, would, I would do good, which was very idealistic at the time. Uh, the first game we published was PuzzleBots in uh, 2010. Uh, the developer, her name was Erin Robinson. She worked on Blackwell and Bound with me. So I knew her. She uh, showed me a prototype of a game called NanoBots, which I really liked. And I had worked with her before, so I knew I could work with her. And um, the early feedback was very positive. And so we, I should back up here. So we started working on this game. And uh, I thought this, this was great. So I had two games being worked on at the same time. But we couldn't find a programmer to work on those ones. Erin uh, wasn't the programmer herself, and the guys we found were either too expensive or they didn't have the time. And it was quite a complicated game. We had four little robots, each doing their own thing. It was very complicated to program. So um, I ended up doing this myself, which, in hindsight, was a really stupid thing to do. Uh, because, yeah, don't do what I did. I was basically paying someone for the privilege of working on their game. And I kind of had to divide my time between my own projects and this other game. And since I was paying to get PuzzleBots made, that game took precedence. So my own, own work got pushed so far ahead. Uh, that's why it took a few years for the, for the third Blackwell game to come out. It's because I was working um, on PuzzleBots and I was working on other things. Uh, and I also, the game was aimed for the wrong audience. Uh, for a while, the, the casual market seemed to be interested in my stuff. And I, we were making a casual game specifically for them. But it took so long to make the game, the casual audience had moved on from the cute cartoony games and were into the gritty realistic hidden object games. So when PuzzleBots came out, it, it wasn't so special to that audience. Uh, and I also was forgetting my original goal, my original mantra, which was this is how I earn my living. I was screwing that up quite badly by dividing my time up so rigorously. So the game came out, um, but I, uh, I realized it was a big risk that I took. Funding a game from scratch, you can spend money on a game, and you can spend time on a game. If you spend money on a game, you gotta earn that back. Uh, likewise, if you spend more time, that's extra time that the game isn't gonna earn money, which you also have to earn back. So you gotta judge what's worth spending, money or time. For PuzzleBots, I was spending both. Uh, I was working full-time programming it, and I was paying uh, the developer to develop and do the art and everything. So, my output was exactly the same as it was two years previously, uh, and this was a mistake. So I had to change my plan. Uh, no more funding a game from scratch. <clears throat> Excuse me. No more funding a game from scratch. It was too risky for someone in my position. Um, any game I published needed to be worked on completely independently from me. I uh, 
couldn't dedicate as much time to it because I wanted to focus on my internal games as well. I needed balance between internal and external. I wanted to have a continuous output coming out. Um, and so Gemini Rue, that got completely squished, but uh, Gemini Rue uh, was the first game uh, we published after PuzzleBots. And uh, Gemini Rue, I felt, was lightning in a bottle. It is something that will never happen again. Uh, the developer, Josh Nuremberger, he had um, almost finished this game. He spent many years working on it. And he did not, um, he just wanted to finish it and be done. He didn't want to deal with the sales or the marketing or the PR or any of that stuff. Uh, so he just said, here, like, can you deal with this? And so it was basically handed to me gift wrapped. All we had to do was we fixed up some art, uh, gave it a lot of QA, and um, we did the voice acting and all of that. So it was, um, oops. our involvement was fairly minimal, at least compared to puzzle bots. And so our, our royalty scheme reflected that. Uh, he ended up getting the lion's share of the profit because he did most of the work, theoretically. So, um, Gemini Ru, for those who don't know, was a pretty huge success by indie adventure game standards. It was our biggest, I'd say, first mainstream hit. Uh, it got picked up by Rock, Paper, Shotgun, Kotaku, all like hardcore sites were writing about it. It put us on the map. This was like really exciting for us. Uh, and so the great thing about it was that it was the type of game we could never have made ourselves, even if we designed it ourselves. Um, this is a game that took him several years to make. And again, this is how we earn our living. We couldn't take three years to make a game because we wouldn't be earning money during that time. So this is the type of game we couldn't have made, on our, uh, made ourselves. So that uh, worked out really well for us and for him because he didn't uh, want to deal with any of this stuff after it was finished. So what's next? Like I said, this was lightning in a bottle. I could never, I couldn't rely on something like this being handed to me again. That just wasn't gonna happen, not realistic. So the best choice, the only thing I could do was uh, look for other games kinda like it. Um, games that were very promising, looked really good, but for some reason the developers couldn't finish it. Uh, either they um, didn't have the motivation, they didn't have the experience, or they didn't have the time to somehow get it to the end. Uh, and that's where we could come in. Because like I said, you could spend money or you could spend time on a game. We couldn't really pay to get the game made, but we could offer the time. Uh, Resonance, which came out earlier this year, was a great example. The developer just had no time to work on it. Uh, he had I think he had spent four years on it, and it was maybe 30% finished, and it was a beautiful looking game, but he had no time to work on it. So uh, my wife, who's a programmer, had just finished a project. She took that on board full time for a year, and we got it done. Uh, it was released at last, uh, last June. So we, could offer, we can't offer money, but we can offer time. Full time involvement. Uh, so 2012 was basically the year of publishing. We did not do any games uh, internally this year. Uh, we did the New Guys in January, Resonance in June, and last week we just released Primordia. So this was probably our biggest year in terms of getting games out the door. Uh, we never had a stronger, we never had a more productive year. So the publishing worked really well for us this year. Uh, so that said, why publish? If you're a developer, why would you want to get into publishing? Um, for me, it was because I wanted to increase my output. I needed more games out, so publishing seemed the best way to do it. Um, again, games that I couldn't make on my own. So we got some games out that we wouldn't have been able to make ourselves and kind of increase our catalog and reputation as a result. Uh, or you just really like the game. Uh, there's a game you really like, and we'd like to have it on our site. But you gotta be careful about that. Um, after 11 games, and six years, almost seven now, uh, you get a certain kind of audience who's more responsive to a specific kind of game. And we've kind of realized over time what kind of games uh, our audience responds better to, and which ones sell more. Uh, the more cartoony comedy ones tend to not do as well. Uh, the kind of the darker, gritty ones do. So when we look to publish a game, we look at that, and that's just us. Um, that's just us and our audience. This isn't something that uh, all publishers should consider. This is just us. So you really gotta think of your audience when you uh, publish a game, or make a game yourself. 
and comes to publishing. It's not all great. Like I said, my own work got pushed to the side. This year, I thought I would be able to work on at least two games of my own. I barely have a design for the next Black Book finished. Uh, all year I've been trying to work on it, but I got distracted by all the other games I was working on. So I became much more of a business person uh, than a design person, which for a while that was fine, but um, I really missed designing. So that I felt that was a sacrifice. I gave up a lot to publish these other games and get them out. And also tough choices sometimes need to be made. Um, as a publisher, you probably have experience as a designer. You get enough games out. I would never say that you would um, know what makes a game good, but you'll know what doesn't work. Because uh, if you've made enough games, you know what the audience is not receptive to. You know what has been uh, critically, um, been not been received well critically, or things that could really destroy a game, or destroy people's like of the game. Uh, and the developer you work with will have to accept that. And that's not always easy. Uh, you, there's many times where uh, you will have to be prepared to be hated. Uh, if you're going to publish someone, you'll have to make choices, and you will butt heads occasionally. And it's not always nice. It's not always pretty. Um, but uh, that's just the way it is. And if you're a developer, why would you want to be published? That's another question. Um, you just want to finish the game and be done with it, like the uh, Gemini Root developer. He just, wanted, he just didn't want to deal with it. He's like, here you go. Um, that could be something you would want. You have trouble getting to the finish line. Some people just, you just can't get there. You need someone to help you in some way or form. Uh, so you just have trouble and you need the help. Uh, you want advice or guidance of someone who's been around the block a few times. That's another reason. Or you just work better with someone cracking the whip. Uh, you just need the motivation. You need someone to set goals for you and get you working. Uh, so that could be another reason. Uh, cons to being published. Sometimes a publisher has a vision that doesn't coincide with yours. Uh, my experience with Emerald City Confidential and uh, working with the company Play First, big example of that, their audience was the mainstream casual market. Um, I didn't have any experience with the casual market, and we argued a lot uh, about um, what should go into the game and what shouldn't go into the game. So uh, be prepared for a lot of arguing. Uh, you lose control. It's no longer yours. Uh, it's now belongs, doesn't necessarily belong to the publisher, but it's no longer just about you and your vision. It's about the game, getting it out, and making sure it's good, um, getting it out on time and on your budget. So you lose a bit of control, and some of your ideas might get cut in favor of hitting deadlines. That's the worst thing you can tell a developer is, sorry, I'm gonna have to cut this out of your game because there's no way we can finish this on time. It's a horrible thing to tell a developer, and no developer wants to hear it, but it happens and quite frequently. Uh, so yeah, both publisher and developer, they both wanted to sell, so you got to make sure that uh, both of you are on the same page in terms of uh, um, what you both want and what you both can do together. Uh, and that is really it. I guess, do we have uh, time for any questions? I guess we have five minutes. No questions? So, what sort of stuff have you got in the pipeline at the moment then? Do you write stuff at all? Um, well, next I've got uh, the next Blackpool game is uh, going to be coming out next year. Like I said, I've it kind of got the design finished, and now that Primordia is off, the, off my plate, I'm going to be working on that full time. I'm going to be taking a, mostly taking a break from publishing next year because I, I miss working on my own stuff. So um, that's next. My wife is porting our back catalog to iOS. So you'll be seeing Gemini Roo on iOS first. Uh, we're testing that right now, so we'll be seeing that sooner than later. Um, and that's about it right now. We also have a, a child coming in May, so that's something that's worth talking about. <laughs> and will you try to sell that book? No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Code freeze in April. Uh, yeah. Did you ever consider bringing on a business guy so you could do the design and let him handle all the publishing? Yes and no. I had a, a guy I was talking to um, who was kind of a big wheeler dealer guy, joined up with a lot of companies, kind of got their businesses, business ducks in a row. Uh, but I really like being independent. I like being small, I kind of like uh, doing my own thing, and it's very hard to do that. And also, like I said, I would still be, um, I would still have to be on top of all the uh, games that we publish, just to, just because I'm, I would still be the product manager, a business guy, I wouldn't know much about the game end. So I would still be in the same position, and I would 
there was a lot of control, which I thought I did. Uh, you had your hand up. Yeah, um, uh, I really liked uh, some of the game I tell you uh, well, some of the game you published and Blackwell Legacy. But uh, I, I know I, I noticed that more, most of them are in uh, AGS, uh, Adventure Game Studio. So you, you just mentioned that you're going to port them to iOS. Mm -hmm. So is there a way to port AGS uh, to it's iOS easy. or uh, how do you do that? Uh, there's, um, if, uh, how many of you are AGSers here? Wow, only half of you, less than half. I'm, I'm, really, uh, I'm really surprised. Um, there is a, uh, on the engine forum, there's a port by someone named JJS who got the grunt work out of the way. Um, my wife is kind of did a lot of the uh, heavy lifting in terms of making it touch screen friendly. Because right now it got ported over easy enough, but it's just not a touch screen friendly game. There's a lot of tweaking and a lot of a lot of things that we have to do to make sure it plays well on an iOS device. So um, the porting it was not the hard part. It's reprogramming a lot of it to make it playable is is the difficult part. Right now, AGS games are not hard to port. It's just Getting it touch screen ready is the hard part. Uh, and uh, how many solicitations do you, do you turn down more solicitations than you accept from developers? Lately, yes. <laughs> um, last year, when I thought, wow, like this Gemini Room is doing so well, I thought my publishing was, would be another arm of my business. So I started searching for them, and I found those three games that I mentioned before, and um, they did they did well. But uh, like I said, lately I've been turning da down more of them because I just either see a lot of um, uh, changes that need to be made uh, in order for me to accept it, and I don't want to get into those discussions because uh, it's just a lot of work and a lot of stress, and next year I really want to focus on my own stuff again. So it's a little selfish, but you know, I, I, need, I need time for me. I need to work on my own stuff again, so it's really, it's hard for me to turn down some stuff when it looks really nice, but I, I do. I, I have to. Um, anyone else? Yes. Um, I saw that Gemini Room was actually being sold physically to boxes in some shops in Germany. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you? Oh sure. Um, I met Dave Lick at uh, GDC last year, and they offered to do it, and we said okay. We s worked with them. They got German voice actors, and they, uh, they got it made, uh, and that was pretty much it. Uh, it hasn't earned a lot, um, unfortunately. Uh, at least by the time the money got to us, we got like very little, very, very little. So we get a lot of requests and offers from people to want to translate our games. And since Gemini Roo, which was our, our pretty much biggest seller, didn't earn us any money, and it was such a lot of work to get it translated, we just don't see the point in translating anything else, at least not right now. So. Uh, Anyone, if that's anyone's question, you know, we're not interested in translating anything else. Uh, there was someone... Uh, different question there. Sure. Um, uh, so it was the first game you did, was it Shiver then? Uh, yeah. So how did you get your press contacts and all that from there in order to be able to make a living purely based on that first game? Well, the Shiver, I wasn't, that wasn't really my first game that I intended to sell commercially. I originally released it as freeware and then just decided that I didn't want to get a real job, so <laughs> I uh, started selling it instead. Um, but when I released Blackwell Legacy, it wasn't easy. I didn't. I underestimated how much work it would be. Um, after like the word of mouth kind of died out, I just started pushing it to press sites and things like that. And it's gotten to the point where I just I could do it on my own. I just hate doing it. And so I, I hired a PR person to kind of do that for me. Now it's just uh, I know I know how to do it. I could sit down and do it myself. It's just a lot of time that I don't want to give. So it's uh, it took a while. It did is take that, a while. Is that PR person uh, specifically a game PR person? Yeah, uh, her name is Emily Morganti. She used to work for Telltale, right. so she knows exactly how to market and sell my kind of stuff. So, and she used to write for adventure gamers as well. So <laughs> she she knows this kind of thing. It's just like it's like having a second brain. In the <laughs> I mean, the biggest thing you got to do is just push to every press site you can think of. Keep a list of everyone you sent it to, and mark down. Who uh, responded? Who um, said they played it? Who actually wrote a review of it? Uh, and just keep following up with all these people. It's just a lot of a lot of mental energy that I just hate doing. Uh, and eventually, after a few years, I'm just like, all right, someone else do it, please. So uh, that's where we are now. Uh, yeah. Um, 
since we published Frankenstein, we've had a lot of people writing to us saying, oh, I've got a great idea for an interactive book, and will you publish it for us? So I'm interested in how you do the revenue model with people who come to you. Do you pay them in advance like a, a book publisher would, and then there's a royalty and it earns out? Do you pay them anything up front? Do you well, buy the game? Like I said, I don't like to do anything from scratch anymore, yeah. just because it's way too much of a risk for us uh, now. But uh, what I usually do, it depends on how much work we put in. I guess for something like Gemini Roo or The New Guys, where we did not put in much effort ourselves, we just did the voice acting and the PR and marketing afterward, um, we will let the developer have the greater share. After like X number of sales, like they get more money, we get less. Uh, for something like Resonance, where we worked on it, my wife was like programming it for a full year, that's a lot of work. And we can't, you know, we had to end up, like it was kind of, it might seem unfair, we ended up taking a bit, a lot, a bit more money than the developer did in the end. Uh, but our uh, goals at the time, we wanted a game to sell. He just wanted to have thing finished, because he had been spending so much time, like four years by that point, and it was just not getting done. But to justify putting that much time into it, we needed more money at the end. So that's how we worked it out. It, it, every game is different. But do you sell everything on royalties, but you don't pay up front the bonuses? Uh, no, we saying. don't. We just, uh, like I said, there's just too much. That might change because uh, we're in a better position now. We might take a risk on someone, but um, not yet. So that might happen. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, I'm curious. Um, are the people who de uh, develop games, do they tend to come from uh, a sort of actual game design background and this is a sort of side, side project? adventure games, or is it just sort of like, uh, like this is their first attempt at game? Some of them, most of them, it's their first time. Uh, either they have uh, experience in programming or art, or, or they've written a lot themselves. I know the writer of Primordia worked on, uh, did writing for other games as well, but he never released a commercial game on his own. So, um, so usually not. They're, they're, usually they're not in the game industry themselves. Uh, they're just kind of doing this in their spare time, which is why they could take three or four years to make a game. Uh, and so by the time it's, it's sort of ready, they're ready to um, get it pushed even farther by someone like us. So usually they're not a professional. If they were a professional, they, they probably wouldn't be made. Anyone else? Okay, that's it. Thanks very much.